All right, now these points up here represent the peak of your trajectory. These points up here represent the peak of your trajectory. Remember that these two points are really the same. These two points are the same. Uh, I'm just drawing this point over here um, because this is the beginning of the downward path, and I don't want the downward path to be in the same place on the board as the upward path. But remember that actually, uh, of course, this peak is the same as this peak. So try drawing the velocity and acceleration vectors for the peak. Try drawing the velocity and acceleration vectors for the peak of the trajectory. Well, the easy part should be to draw the acceleration vector, because the acceleration is always 9.8 meters per second squared down. Remember, that's the whole reason that we can do kinematics here, because the acceleration is constant. We couldn't use constant acceleration kinematics if the acceleration was not constant. So our acceleration should not be changing. So here's the acceleration vector. I try to draw this arrow the same length as these arrows. I don't know if I'm really succeeding, but I'm trying to draw this arrow the same length as these arrows down here. But now this represents the acceleration at the peak. And what about the velocity at the peak? Well, hopefully you were able to use some of the skills that we worked on in the previous series of videos, because at the peak, the object is changing its direction, right? At the peak of the trajectory, the object is changing its direction. So an instant before it reached the peak, the object was moving up. An instant before we reach the peak, we're moving up. But then an instant after we reach the peak, we're going to be moving down. So at the peak, we are transitioning from moving up to moving down. We're changing direction. Well, in the previous series of videos, we discussed that in the instant you change direction, your velocity is zero. In the instant you change direction, your velocity is zero. Well, since we're changing direction at the peak, our velocity must be zero at the peak. So we can't draw an arrow for the velocity because you can't draw an arrow that has no length. If the velocity is zero, you don't draw an arrow, you just say that the velocity is zero. So at the peak, the velocity is zero because we're changing direction at the peak. We're transitioning from moving up to moving down. You can kind of see that we had this coming, right? Because down here, um, uh, we were moving with a pretty high speed. And then we slowed down so that we're moving with a low speed. Well, we can't keep slowing down forever. Eventually, we're going to slow down so much that the velocity is zero. And clearly, that's when we reached our peak. Once we've slowed down so much that the velocity is zero, clearly the object can't keep moving up anymore. So to again repeat that argument, down here we saw that we were moving upwards quite quickly. But gravity was slowing us down so that at this point we were moving upwards but pretty slowly. Well, we can't keep slowing down forever. Eventually we're going to slow down so much that we're not moving upwards at all. So for an instant, our velocity is going to be zero. Um, and that's going to be the peak of our trajectory. And then, of course, an instant after that, um, gravity is going to start pulling us downward, in a downward direction. This is going to be a very important prob uh, problem-solving um, uh, idea here. So very important to understand why, at the peak, the vertical velocity is zero. At our peak, our vertical velocity has to be zero because we're changing direction. And remember that these two points are really the same point. So you could say the same thing about this point. Now, try drawing the velocity and acceleration vectors for this point. Try to draw the velocity and acceleration vectors for this point. I hope, as usual, you pause the video and gave that a shot. Well, the acceleration should be easy. Remember that in projectile motion, when uh, we're in free fall and the only force is gravity, we have a constant acceleration. The acceleration is constant, 9.8 meters per second squared down. So we can draw the same acceleration as before. And I'm trying to draw it not just that this is down, but this arrow is supposed to be the same length as all the acceleration arrows over here. I don't think I'm doing a very good job. Uh, but I'm trying to draw an arrow that's the same length as the acceleration arrows over here. The acceleration doesn't change when you're in free fall. The force of gravity is constant, so our acceleration is going to be constant. Now, what about the velocity here? Well, clearly the velocity should be pointing down, because we're moving down. Remember that the velocity tells you which way you're moving. So since we're moving down, the velocity should be down. Now, I hope that you saw that I wanted this point to be at the same height as this point over here. That's what these dashes meant. This point is at the same height as this point over here. So we're moving down, but we should be moving at the same speed as when we passed this point going up. 
So this velocity vector should look like this. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to draw a downward arrow that is the same length as this upward arrow at the same height. Uh, I don't know if I'm really succeeding in drawing this um, as accurately as I wanted, but this, the length of this arrow should be the same as the length of this arrow because they're at the same height. This is something else that we discussed in the previous series of videos on general one-dimensional motion. We talked about briefly how um, uh, constant acceleration motion is symmetric. We discussed that constant acceleration motion is symmetric. Constant acceleration motion is symmetric. That means that if two points have the same displacement, then the object has the same speed at those two points. If two points have the same displacement, then the object has the same speed at those two points. Well, these two points have the same displacement from our, the ground, say, because they're both at the same height. For, uh, for um, vertical projectile motion, we could really just say, if two points are at the same height, then they should have the same speed. If two points are at the same height, the object should have the same speed at those two points. I'll say that one more time. Um, if two points are at the same height, then the object should have the same speed when it passes those two points. So whatever the speed was when we passed this point, that should be the same as the speed when we pass this point, because it's at the same height. If this is 5 meters per second going up, this should be 5 meters per second going down. Now, we can't say the velocities are the same, because remember, the velocity also indicates the direction. These two points do not have the same velocity, because on the, uh, on the upward path, we had an upward velocity, and on the downward path, we had a downward velocity. Um, so we don't have the same velocity at the same height, but we do have the same speed. I hope you know that speed just refers to the magnitude of the velocity. It just refers to how fast you're going, but we're going at the same speed at these two points. This is another very useful problem-solving um, concept for projectile motion. Um, try to use the symmetry of the problem to save you some time on projectile motion. Okay, so these two arrows here would be uh, the same length, uh, but here we're uh, pointing down. All right, now let's try to draw um, the velocity and acceleration at this point, which is supposed to be at the same height as this point over here. I hope you gave that a shot. Well, the acceleration is always the same in uh, vertical projectile motion. The acceleration here is always going to be 9.8 meters per second squared down. So I draw the same acceleration as before. And again, I'm trying to draw all these acceleration vectors as the same length. In free fall, your acceleration does not change. How about the velocity? Well, clearly we're on the downward path. We're moving down. So the velocity vector should be pointing down. Um, but it should be pretty obvious that we're speeding up. Right? Of course, that's just common sense. You know that once an object starts moving down under the force of gravity, it moves faster and faster. That's just common sense. After, you, um, after an object starts moving downwards, it moves faster and faster downwards the further it goes. Um, so clearly, this velocity vector is going to be longer than this one over here. But we can be more precise. Since this point is at the same height as this point, the speed at this point should be the same as the speed that we had when we passed this point going up. Okay, so to draw this velocity vector, we're moving down, so I draw this as a downward arrow. Um, obviously, this arrow should be bigger than this arrow because we're speeding up. So you, the, um, you can see here, this velocity arrow is longer than this velocity arrow. That indicates that as we're moving downwards, we're moving faster and faster. And in fact, this velocity arrow should be the same length as this velocity arrow on the left because these two points are at the same height. That's using our symmetry. If two points are at the same height, they should have the same speed, which means that the, the vector arrows should have the same length. We should not say that these two velocities are the same, because this velocity is positive and this velocity is negative. But we do say that these two points at the same height have the same speed. They have the same magnitude, the same length of the arrow. And again, it should be clear that this arrow should be longer than this one, because we're speeding up. Another way to see that we're speeding up is that on our downward path, the acceleration is always parallel to the velocity. Here the acceleration is parallel to the velocity, and here the acceleration is still parallel to the velocity. Well, we know that as long as the acceleration is parallel to the velocity, we're speeding up. So on the downward path, we're speeding up. On the other hand, on the upward path, the acceleration was always opposite to the velocity, so we were slowing down. When the acceleration is opposite to the velocity, um, you're slowing down. Again, clearly you can see that the acceleration doesn't tell you which way you're moving. The acceleration doesn't tell us which way we're moving, because when we were moving up, the acceleration was still down. 
but the velocity tells you which way you're moving. When we were moving up, the velocity was up. And when we were moving down, the velocity was down. The velocity tells you which way you're moving. The acceleration just tells you whether you're speeding up or slowing down. Over here, the acceleration is anti-parallel to the velocity, so we're slowing down. And over here, the acceleration is parallel to the velocity, so we're speeding up.